Hello, Power Fans. It's Methonical, and you're joining me for round three of my second recorded Popper League. We are playing some Kami Lock Pestilence. Opening hand is a little land heavy, but at least the excluded step can cycle for something else. We have some protection effects, a Sentinels if they, if the matchup is good for that, and a Grim Harvest, which is the more difficult part to find of our Kami Lock combo. We're going to be very happy keeping this one. Windscarred Crag, likely a Boros Monarch list. We're quite familiar with those, and one of the reasons to play Orzhov Pestilence is you can go over the top uh, in a long game over Boros Monarch. Uh, basically, Pestilence allows us to continually wipe their board, and the life gain effects means we do not get burned out. It is the 1-2 punch that reliably beats Boros. So, we're just going to go ahead and keep getting our mana online. Uh, You'll notice here on the next turn, I'm not going to be playing any Palace Sentinels. Uh, basically, we don't want to be giving away for free, uh, like the Monarch, to their Flyers. So instead, we're just going to play a Tapped Land, and I'm going to be using one of these Prismatic Strands just to completely uh, stop... Like, it's going to prevent 5 damage here, but more importantly, we want it in the Graveyard, so that way when we play a Palace Sentinels, there's no way that uh, my opponent would be able to... Uh, basically steal it back on the following turn. Although it is a little bit risky since they've left two mana up, so because of that we're just going to wait. No big rush. Uh, and they may have a Palace Sentinels of their own, and it's always better to play the second Palace Sentinels. So we're just going to take our beats, and sure enough our opponent does play a Palace Sentinel here. Uh, this gives us a really good opportunity to land our own, and the uh, Kami of the False Hope is perfect. Turns out they did have the Govanic Blast to remove our creature, but we've got the Kami of Last Hope. Even if they were to remove it here, we flash back the Prismatic Strands, and then we just get to crack the Kami on the next turn to prevent their damage. Then we've got Prismatic Strands to go forward after that, so things are looking pretty good. Uh, we still want to find some way of like winning the game, but currently we have the Grim Harvest plus Kami of the False Hope, so we do have infinite fogs, at least for the foreseeable future. I don't want to use it this turn though, simply because if they have a removal spell to get rid of the Kami, then we wouldn't be able to leave up Kami for the next turn. Sure enough, they do have a Lightning Bolt, but here we're basically looking to use the Prismatic Strands to fog out this next turn. And we just want to keep riding this Monarch and preventing our opponent from taking it. Uh, our opponent looks to be digging, probably for another Palace Sentinels. Oh, but they did find a Core Sky Fisher, which will or at least would have allowed them to reset their Palace Sentinels. I was actually a little surprised, and I'm still quite surprised when they didn't do that. Uh, but here, I'm just going to go ahead and start doing the Kami Lock. Uh, basically, I've got the Prismatic Strands in the graveyard, so if they try and burn it, I'm just going to protect with the Prismatic Strands. Uh, it's possible that they could have burned twice, and in that case that would have been rather unfortunate, but there wasn't going to be much we could do about that. And in this position, we do only want one creature, simply because they do have instant speed removal. Uh, basically, we're going to be able to crack this to prevent all combat damage, pay three mana to get the Grim Harvest back into our hand, and then use two mana to return the uh, Kami of the False Hope back to our hand. But that would be risky if there's a creature on the board, because we'd be completely tapped out, and they could kill another one of our creatures, and we wouldn't be able to get the Grim Harvest back. Thankfully, we are in a pretty good spot, although if they at any point they do draw instant speed removal here, they would be able to steal the Monarchy back at some point, but currently no big deal. It would be really nice to find one of our Pestilence that would basically seal the deal on this game. But in the meantime, we've got our Kami Lock. Getting two Kamis on the board means they now need to find two removal spells, and we finally found our Pestilence. Things are looking quite good now. They're going to continue to swing in, and we're going to continue to fog as indefinitely as we can. So, we'll take no damage there. We're going to go ahead and use Grim Harvest to get back the Kami again. Actually, we didn't there, simply because I do want to hold up as much mana as possible without having to worry about spending three for the Grim Harvest. Uh, basically, here, we have a few options. We get to basically stop the attack, and now at the end of the turn, we get to wipe everything out. It also gave us the backup plan of if they decided to remove our creature, we would have just used this during their turn, would have meant that we likely would have lost Pestilence, but at this point with the Kami Lock we're not too worried about losing the Pestilence, and we just want to really keep this Monarch on our side. Although we do have the backup plan of having another Palace Sentinels in case we did lose it. 
Uh, since we don't have to worry about fogging every single turn, we're just going to go ahead and try and gain a ton of life here. And now we've got the combo of being able to kill our own lone missionary and get back the Grim Harvest. So things are looking quite good on all fronts currently. Sends Enlistment is not a problem for us since we're able to just use Pestilence to clear out those creatures. Our opponent tries to wipe out all the creatures, but since we're doing this during the end step, we're not going to lose the Pestilence. And we still get our Grim Harvest. We can also cycle the Ash Barons, because why not? Might as well thin the deck of some lands. And we're just going to Grim Harvest back the Lone Missionary. We're going to bounce it, replay it, gaining as, ton as much life as we can. So things are looking quite good. Opponent is continuing to play draw go, except they they decided they've looked at enough cards and they've seen enough of our Kami Lock Pestilence combo, so they do end up conceding that game. Alright, so we're just going to jump on over to game two. You can see that how the game can get quite grindy and it was going to take a while to get there, but it we had the lock established. Going to the sideboard here... Uh, we do want the core sanctifiers. There's a lot of random targets, like we can hit a land sometimes, sometimes we'll hit uh, one of their artifacts that draw them a card, sometimes if they have journeys we can hit one of those. Uh, lots of things, to, lots of reasons to bring that in. Uh, we're also going to bring in the castigate. Uh, that's just a really good way of just picking apart a little bit of their hand. And outside of that there isn't really much that we need. Uh, I'm going to take out the Disfigure, and what else did I take out? Oh, one Thraven Inspector. Uh, basically, we already have a decent amount of removal, and we're basically just looking to establish, as you saw, either the Kamilok or get a Pestilence on the field to just kind of permanently control the board. So since our main deck is already very well tuned against this matchup, we don't really have to go too overboard in sideboarding. It's also reasonable to consider just bringing a little extra removal if you're worried about their flyers, uh, but I've found that you don't really need to do that. Taking a look at our opening hand, uh, this is not a keepable hand. Well, you can keep it because we have the Knight's Whisper. Any second land allows us to get this off. So let's find out how risky I was feeling. Not risky at all. Went with a safe plan and sent that one back. And this is a perfectly reasonable hand. We will want more lands over the long haul, but of course Skyfishers should uh, either eat some removal or at least lock up the board state for a little while. And Kami will definitely buy some turn, especially with the Prismatic Strands. So we'll go ahead and keep this one. Uh, Pal Sentinel's on top. I believe I'm shipping that to the bottom. We just We basically just want more land drops at the moment. And no point in keeping a 4-drop when we only have two lands in hand. I'm going to play the Kami here, basically because I don't want the Thraben Inspector to get burned. Um, of course there is the argument, just play the Thraben Inspector, hope it doesn't get burned, because that sets up a nice core Skyfish of the next turn. But I felt like it, it seemed uh, that my opponent was holding up a removal spell, so I just play the Kami hoping to just eat a removal spell to play the Thraben Inspector. Didn't pan out that way. So this looks a little bit clumsy this time, and I'm just going to play the Thraven Inspector now. And so it did survive, that's exactly what we wanted, because now we can play a course Skyfisher, bouncing the Thraven Inspector. And now we can just start getting these clues for the long game, since this is generally going to be a bit of a long one. I was definitely going to block if, the, if, if they wanted to bluff an Electricery, if they had it, well, that's fine. Decides to not go with the bluff attack, that's also fine by me. I'm going to try and draw a card here just to get a land. It didn't get it. Uh, I knew that if I didn't get one I was going to have to discard, but I felt like that was reasonable since it was going to allow me to discard the Prismatic Strands. Putting it in the graveyard means it's now going to be a free spell going forward, and we're just going to go ahead and use it now. Mine as well. We definitely want to keep at least some board presence so we don't just start getting run over by the creatures they have. Still not getting any land drops, but I'm just going to go ahead and play the Arrestion Cleric. The reason why, if they have another burn spell to get rid of the Core Skyfisher, the Arrestion Cleric at least starts absorbing some damage. Opponent is just drawing a lot of cards, that is what Boros does. And normally we would be getting buried under card advantage, but we know we have a better advantage engine in the long game. Ash Barons is exactly what we want, because it allows us to start actually playing magic here. 
And we're going to go ahead and play, of course, Skyfisher, bouncing their Russian Cleric, mainly because we'd like additional life just to buy additional turns, and we want blockers to really lock up this board state. So far, things are going exactly according to plan. And not really sure what my opponent is on at the moment uh, in their hand, but assuming some number of burn spells, which makes me wonder why they're not burning the creatures. I assume they must be planning for some massive go-for-the-face plan, but that's fine. Continue to do what Boros does. If you'd like to see all of the card drawing in action, I've got some videos of that in the past. Goes ahead and removes one of our creatures. That's fine. I got a lot of them. Getting a fourth land drop. Now we're in business. Now we have the options of being able to kick a core sanctifiers. We've got extra card draw. We have palace sentinels. My opponent is playing the first Palace Sentinels, that is fine by me. I'm just going to play one right back. And this is basically why I don't like playing the first Palace Sentinels. Usually the second one is in a bit better position. Turns out my opponent has another one, that's fine. We don't actually mind if my opponent uh, continues to have the Monarch. Basically, we can go on the decking plan, especially since they're already 10 cards down. And we've got the board state locked up fairly effectively. Uh, basically, we're just going to aim for the deck them plan. Uh, we cast, I don't know if you noticed there, it was pretty quick, but I did cast the Castigate. Since they're tapped out and they've got a lot of cards, I decided might as well pick a bit of their hand apart. And it turns out they had a Flaring Pain in hand. This could have caused us some problems in the future if we were trying to use a Prismatic Strand to uh, basically block a bunch of burn spells to the face, or if we were using uh, Kami the False Hope to block a large Alpha Strike. Thankfully, being able to exile it means they get no sides of it, and we're completely able to get rid of that. And the rest of their hand is basically lands, drawing cards, and another Palace Sentinels. I'm not too worried about the Palace Sentinels, because I'm basically on the decking them plan at this point. We still do need more lands, but at least we have a lot of gas and a lot of options in our hand. And we don't have to worry about the Flaring Pain. Usually these lists only run one if they run any at all. So I'm not too worried about any more Flaring Pains coming out in the future. Pestilence, that is a good card to have. We're just going to drop that down and this will allow us control over how many creatures are on the board. If we ever feel like there's too many, we can just, uh, you know, fix that. If my opponent ever starts going for some kind of Alpha Swing, we've got the Kami. But if they're just going to swing with a couple little things, no problem, I'll block them. If they're going to try and, if like, even though I'm kind of on the deck them plan, if they give us the opportunity to take the monarch back, I don't mind. Especially since we can attack both these creatures, activate Pestilence twice, and this would basically give us them no opportunities to block. Uh, since they ended up killing both of our guys, and activating it a third time wasn't going to kill any more of our guys, I go ahead and activate a third time just to remove most of the board. So for the cost of three little life, we've killed most of their creatures and a good number of ours, but we're not too worried about that. We've got plenty more in hand. Gonna play another Kami of the False Hope because why not? Apparently it's good enough to take a bolt. And I'm a little surprised that my opponent cracked their relic there. I feel like that would have been better for them to hold it until we had more action in the graveyard rather than this bunch of creatures, but I guess they just wanted to try and get rid of as much of the Kami lock as possible, but we still have it in hand. So, you know, things are looking pretty good. Extra lands is exactly what we want. Uh, basically, to indefinitely do the Grim Harvest Kami lock combo, we do need to make sure we have six mana sources to be able to do it every single turn, the entire thing. Opponent is trying to dig through to find something better, but that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and use the Call me the false hope. Uh, you'll probably notice I didn't end up cracking it there. The reason being, cracking it there would have just prevented two damage, and that wouldn't have been too much. But by letting it do one damage, I can now activate Pestilence for three, wiping everything on the board except for their Palace Sentinels and my Palace Sentinels. This allows me to then Chainer's Edict their creature, and then we have the only creature. Uh, they're going to have to start cracking their Alchemist Vials to prevent us from stealing the Monarch back. And then we're just going to play more creatures. 
it sounds like a good plan to me. So there's the Chainer's Edict. We're going to go for the attack. They're of course going to use the Alchemist file, all as intended. And we're just going to get a second creature down on the battlefield just to try and prevent them from killing all of our creatures and making us lose the Pestilence. They play their third Palace Sentinels. I feel like that was a little premature, personally, because I'm not sure how they're going to prevent us from doing this going forever forward, but... Uh, yeah, I didn't see an easy, reasonable way for us to take the Monarch back, especially through an Alchemist file, so I just happily play a couple additional creatures here, and I'm not in much of a hurry. We've got the life advantage, we've got Pestilence, and yeah. Here I'm just going to finally cash in the Knight's Whisper. This will hopefully draw us more lands, which it does. Thraim Inspector is nice. We're just going to continue to play out some creatures and lock up the board position. Uh, they do play a Core Sanctifier to blow up our Pestilence. I'm just going to let that happen. I don't really want to just activate it for one to wipe out a couple of their things, and activating it for two doesn't do anything. We'd be losing more than they would. My opponent thinks that they have a good position here, and normally they would, but we've been sandbagging a second Pestilence. I'm just going to go ahead and crack a clue. Might as well draw some additional cards. And yeah. Here. I'm basically going to swing in, or actually I was thinking of swinging in. Ended up changing my mind because most likely they would just kind of throw a couple Kiths and Soldiers in front and kind of telegraphs things. They're going to go for a large Alpha Strike here, and this is actually very beneficial for us. Uh, basically this is going to allow us to uh, block these three creatures, and then by activating Pestilence for two, one or two, we can kill most of the board, and that sounds pretty good. It's also going to incentivize my opponent, if they've got Rally the Peasants, to kind of go for it. Turns out my opponent does have it, and I'm just going to go ahead and use the Pestilence here. I could have waited to see if they'd flash back a second time, but I'm assuming they wouldn't. Most of the creatures are gone off the board now, and that's fine. I'm going to continue to play things to the board. And... Basically, I don't mind taking a little bit of damage. I'm just going to be looking to keep the Pestilence around while keeping control of the board to some degree. Bonus continuing to play Ascends Enlistments. I feel like uh, they definitely should have waited to use that after the fact, after the combat, but uh, he's starting to realize that he's down a minute and time could become a factor since he needs to win this game and the next one. The games can certainly get grindy, so I... If you plan on playing this deck, be prepared. We're just going to continue to grind out our opponents. Opponent is starting to go for bigger swings, that's no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and make these blocks. Uh, basically this is going to allow us to wipe out the entire board at some point. And since uh, basically these two are blocked, we weren't going to be taking any damage. And on the end step, we're just going to continue finishing uh, wiping the board completely, and now we just got to play as many creatures as we want to keep our Pestilence around, and we are in a very good position. I'm even going to use this Core Sanctifier just to blow up a, a, an Alchemist vial, because why not? And my opponent decides they've seen enough. Basically, the part that everyone may have missed is that they're down to one card. We have successfully gone through their entire deck, and they couldn't do anything about it. So if you want to crush the soul of a Boros Monarch player, play Kamilok Orzov Pestilence. This has been round three. I hope you've enjoyed this long and grindy game, and I will see you back here for round four.